Hello and welcome to the ultimate ultra kill weapon guide. Here we cover how to obtain every weapon, how each weapon works, and several tricks you can use to master them. First, we'll go over the arms. Not arms like firearms, we'll get to those later, but actual robot arms. Starting with the default arm, the Feedbacker. You receive the Feedbacker right as you first spawn the tutorial. You can use it to punch enemies, but that doesn't prove too effective. Its main strength is its ability to parry enemy attacks. With a perfectly timed punch, you can send enemy projectiles right back to them. Often exploding on contact whether the projectile was explosive in the first place or not. And you're also rewarded with some health, but even then, you must be careful on where you send the deflected projectile so it doesn't explode in your face. But the parry system isn't just limited to enemy projectiles like fireballs. Almost everything in the game can be parried. Swords, enemy shotgun shells, your own shotgun shells, giant fists, the wrath of God, anything. Well, not everything can be parried. There are some things like Cerberus dashes, the Mind Flayer's laser beam attack, and the black hole projectiles as seen in the fight with the corpse of King Minos and the flesh prison fight which the feedbacker has no effect on. One thing to look out for is yellow and blue sparks. Yellow sparks mean that a certain attack can be parried or deflected, like the malicious faces charge attack or swords machine sword, while blue sparks mean that an unparryable attack is coming up, most notably the street cleaner's flamethrower, the aforementioned mind flayer's laser beam, and V2's nail gun barrage in the second encounter. With good enough timing, you could beat almost any enemy very easily with nothing but the feedbacker arm. And for the boss fights, it's recommended that you switch to it, as most bosses have some sort of parryable attack. Don't let anything in this game give you shit without giving it back. As Cave Johnson once said, When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back! Up next is the Knuckle Blaster, which you earn by beating V2 for the first time. The Knuckle Blaster isn't as versatile as the Feedbacker, but it's much better as a straightforward melee weapon. The attack consists of a slow punch, slower than the Feedbacker, and an explosion when you hold down the punch button for long enough. The punch itself is much more powerful than the Feedbacker, killing most low-level enemies in a single hit. And if it doesn't kill them, and if they're a light enemy like the Schism enemies, you'll launch them away at light speed. The following explosion is pretty weak. The only thing I use it for is against a swarm of filth, which are the weakest enemy in the game. What I like to do is to jump up in the air, ground pound to bounce everyone off the ground, jump up with them, and then kaboom their ass to high heaven. I mean hell. This should easily get you a good score and bring your style meter up really well. If you see a sentry rooted into the ground, you can root them, deroot them? God, English is such a stupid language. Out of the ground by punching them, but it has to be the initial punch and not the explosion. The blast can actually be used to deflect projectiles, but not like the feedbacker arm can. It doesn't send the projectiles right where you aim, but it does at least stop them from going in your general direction, which is really useful against the mind flayer enemies. By itself, the knuckle blaster is alright, but combined with the next weapon, it is a match made in heaven. I mean hell. The whiplash arm is obtained after winning the second encounter with V2. And it's unlike the other two arms. It doesn't have a real melee attack, and you can't switch to it with the switch arms button. Instead, it has a dedicated button that works no matter what arm or weapon you have equipped. The whiplash is a grappling hook that can snag onto these green grappling targets and onto enemies. Hooking light enemies will bring them to you, but hooking big enemies will bring you to them. It can be great for closing the distance between you and your opponent but you must use it in moderation and try not to get too overzealous with it, as it deals hard damage to you. What hard damage does is it lowers your maximum health temporarily, so if you start going crazy with it, you can be stuck with a max of 50 health. But hard damage is mitigated at higher style rankings, 
and at ULTRA KILL rank, you're completely immune to the hard damage dealt by using it. Because it technically isn't a real weapon, it isn't much on its own, but combined with other arms and weapons, oh shit. My favorite use for the whiplash arm is combining with the knuckle blaster. While I'm up in the air, I like to bring light enemies up to me and then punch them into smithereens. It gives more style points than just killing them regularly on the ground, but I mainly use it for healing purposes because blood is f Well, that didn't age well. Okay, so do not use the whiplash for healing anymore. If you're at 1 HP or whatever, it's fine, but if you already have too much hard damage built up, you just try jumping around like a madman to dodge everything and try to rank up to heal the hard damage off. Remember in the Knuckle Blaster segment where light enemies that don't die in one hit get launched at 500 miles an hour? With the Whiplash Arm, what you can do is bring them up in the air, aim towards the ground, and send them back down at incredible speed which greatly increases the fall damage they take and turns them into a thin red paste. That way you don't have to go through all the trouble of hitting them twice, and it gives you a good amount of style points. On the first level of the Limbo layer, you meet these drone enemies that die in one punch from the Knuckle Blaster. What's interesting is that after death, they fly towards wherever you punch them and explode on contact. So the obvious thing to do is to send it towards enemies. The Piercer is the first gun you get in the game, obtained by just walking forward through this intro section. The Piercer is a 100% accurate weapon. There is no bullet spread like other shooter games, so it requires some amount of precision. For weak enemies, it requires two shots to anywhere below the neck or one shot in the head. What's special is the Alt Fire. You're able to charge up a super railgun laser that pierces up to three enemies, hence the name. Good for clearing up crowds, but it has a short cooldown before you can do another one. Overall, the Piercer is a pretty basic weapon. Nothing special. Now things get real interesting. The Marksman Pistol is acquired by purchasing it from the shop, first seen on level 0-2. The primary fire is the exact same as the Piercer Pistol, but the secondary fire tosses a coin up in the air, you can shoot the coin with any hit scan weapon, that is, the Marksman or Piercer Pistol, the Electric Railgun, and the Malicious Railgun, and it homes in on an enemy's weak point, usually the head, if it is in range of the coin. You can toss up to four coins, which will slightly increase the damage of the reflected shot as it bounces between all of the coins and then into someone's skull. The coin's trajectory is based on your movement when you tossed it, so if you run forward and toss it, it goes further. If you toss it while backpedaling, it stays closer to your face. If you jump and toss, it goes higher, and so on, so on. If you shoot the coin with any pistol while it sparks, like this, or starts to sing as it falls, like this, your shot will split in two and possibly kill two enemies at once. There are so many tricks you can do with the coin. One is coin punching. You step back for a second and toss it so it doesn't go too far off, and then you punch the coin towards an enemy with the feedbacker arm, which deals a lot of damage, usually killing low-tier enemies in one hit, and it bounces up in the air to be hit again. You can deflect the malicious face's charge shot back to it if you toss a coin in front of its mouth as it shoots. You just need really good timing. Here's a harder one. If you time it right, you can hit a big enemy with the electric railgun three times in one go. In just a second, you must toss a coin while walking forward for a far toss through the enemy, walk backwards and toss a coin so it's on your side of the enemy, then quickly take out your railgun and fire straight ahead to hit the first coin. The railgun hits the enemy once, deflects off the first coin and heads back to the second one, which hits the enemy a second time, then it deflects off the second coin that goes through the head, hitting it a third time, usually killing it. It's good to practice this in the sandbox mode with blind enemies and no cooldown, but for a live practice in level, 
this Cerberus in the beginning of level 4-2. God damn, the sun! Is pretty good. There are many, many coin tricks in this game, and I won't go over every single one in this video. Though this video by YouTuber Er Messiah is a great introduction to the mechanics of the coin, and a compilation of some cool tricks you could do with it. <laughs> To get the alternate pistols, you have to find four stone panels in each of the four levels on the Limbo layer. At the very end of level one, before heading into the exit door, you break the top windows and jump through. At the end of level two, when you reach this room, go here and destroy this wall. And then this wall. Defeat the hardest boss in the game. Then the hardest boss in the game, but bigger. And then the second slab is in here. For the third level, you must get both of the skulls for this door, and this window will open. Now you must defeat both of these swords machines and get the third slab. And on level 4, the fourth slab is right at the beginning of the level, and in the door lies the alternate pistol, also known as the slab revolver. The difference between the slab revolver and the regular pistol is that the slab is double everything. Double the damage, double the length between firing, for the piercer, the charge shot does a lot of damage, but has twice the cooldown time. For the marksman revolver, you can't do a split shot with the coin like you can with the regular pistol, but if you hit it during the spark or while it sings, it instead pierces enemies and hits them twice depending on their health. My personal recommendation is to have an alternate piercer revolver as a reliable high damage primary weapon and the regular marksman pistol in case a coin would come in handy. For example, when fighting the street cleaner enemy, their weak spot is in the gas tank on their back, and the easiest way to hit it is to whip out the marksman and shoot a coin you threw behind them so it ricochets off and kills them in one shot. And if I so badly wanted to ricochet a slab revolver shot, I could switch the weapons during the coin toss. To obtain the core eject shotgun, you must defeat Swords Machine for the first time, either in 0-3 or you can get it early by finding the secret encounter in 0-2. The primary fire is like every shotgun in a video game. Multiple pellets come out at once, mostly for close range, you know the drill. The primary fire does a decent chunk of damage, with the potential to wipe out a few filth enemies in one shot, and kill lowly enemies like husks or soldiers in one hit but no more. The secondary fire is much more powerful, however. It fires a grenade that travels further the longer you charge up the shot, and does some pretty decent damage, one-shotting the filth enemies and dealing some nice damage to other lowly enemies. With the grenade, you can perform a grenade launch jump by simply shooting at your feet, which launches you much higher than regularly jumping, similar to rocket jumping in other games. This takes some really good aim to pull off, but if you shoot a grenade in the air and then hit the grenade with a malicious railgun shot, you'll effectively nuke the entire arena, and this huge explosion goes off and deals plenty of damage. And while on the topic of explosive jumping, you can also use the giant explosion to do this great jump across the stage. The pump action shotgun is acquired by purchasing it from the shop after it's unlocked by getting the core eject shotgun. At first, it fires less pellets and deals less damage than the core eject shotgun, although fires at a faster rate, but its real power comes from the alt fire. Instead of firing a grenade, you pump the shotgun, which charges another shot ready to fire. Each shot pumped will make you fire a higher volume of pellets, but at a wider spread limiting it to only practically melee range use. After three pumps, however, you won't fire any pellets out and the shotgun instead just explodes in your face, 
dealing massive damage both to you and the enemies around you. Now, the first thing to note is that you can avoid the self-damage from the chargeback shot entirely. When you dash, you get a few frames of invulnerability from all damage, meaning that you can get up close to an enemy, unleash massive damage with the chargeback shot, and use the dash to completely mitigate any damage from an otherwise suicidal attack. You can also perform an explosive jump, just like the core eject shotgun, and it is more reliable as you don't need a nearby surface for it to work and you can just do it out of thin air. But it deals much more self damage, taking away half your health away instantly. So say you're on the cyber grind game mode, maybe you got pushed off the arena, you backpedaled off on accident, or some jackass just led you off and thought it would be funny to record the whole thing. It's too late to wall jump back up, but if you react fast enough, you can overcharge the shotgun, aim down, and launch yourself back on stage. Just as long as you have over 50 HP. One of the most iconic features of this game is projectile boosting. Originally a bug before being added as a feature to the game, if you time it right, you can punch your own shotgun pellet as it comes out of the barrel dealing explosive damage as it makes any surface contact. First, you must have the feedbacker arm equipped. Then fire the shotgun, and the millisecond afterwards, use your melee attack to parry your shotgun pellet. The timing on this is very tight. Another cool trick with the shotgun is shotgun switching, where instead of waiting on this long-ass reload animation, you could switch to another shotgun variation to cancel the reload animation, making it quickly available to fire again. So shoot, switch, shoot, switch, repeat. If you get a good rhythm, you can be a fast firing machine, literally. And if you're really good, you can shotgun switch and do a projectile boost for each shot. The first nail gun you get is the Attractor. Obtain when you get to the middle of level 1-1. The nail gun is a fully automatic machine gun type weapon, peppering enemies with rapidly fired nail projectiles. It's good at close to medium range, but the drop off of the nails makes it ineffective at longer ranges. The attractor nail gun is the only weapon in the game with limited ammo, but even then it eventually refills as you aren't shooting it, so it's best to switch to another weapon when you run out. The alt fire shoots out this magnetic spear that sticks to any surface or any enemy. If you shoot nails in its general direction, they'll attract to it, as the name suggests. You can shoot up to three magnets, and they remain for a little bit of time, but they can also break. For surface stuck magnets, you can shoot them with a pistol to break them. And for magnets stuck to enemies, they break when the enemy is killed. It's good for fast moving enemies that are hard to hit. And if you shoot one or two at the ground, you can create a trap for enemies. Though the only purpose I found for this is for hordes of filth. If you attract a bunch of nails onto a magnet that you stuck onto a surface, and then break it with a pistol, you'll effectively make a shrapnel bomb, and it obliterates any close by enemies. Next is the overheat nail gun. The Overheat Nail Gun is acquired by purchase from the shop after unlocking it by acquiring the Tractor Nail Gun. The main fire is about the same, but instead of having a limited ammo supply, it instead has a heat counter. When the heat is full, the rate of fire is drastically slowed down, but now the alt fire is ready. You fire out this quick barrage of flaming nails, which deals incredible damage and lights any low-level enemy that somehow survives on fire. You have two overheat charges, and after both are used up, the rate of fire is practically non-existent. But it does regenerate over time, so again, it's best to switch to another weapon. The nails and flaming nails from the overheat nail gun also work with the attractor's magnet, and you can create fiery nail bombs. Oh, and speaking of the attractor nail gun, firing the attractor nail gun also charges up the overheat meter. So if you run out of a tractor ammo, you can switch the variation and immediately let out a firing nail barrage. The alternate nail gun is much more different from the regular nail guns than the alternate pistols are to the standard pistols. In a certain secret in level 4-3, there's hints to a secret room with water that you need to hit with a railgun. 
It's referring to this room in level 4-4 that you get into by snagging the skull off the pedestal with the whiplash arm through this small crack in the door. You shoot the water with the electric rail cannon and then this door opens, giving you the alternate nail gun. The alternate nail gun resembles a crossbow that shoots circular saw blades rather than bolts. Like the alternate pistol, it's more powerful but slower than the standard nail gun. You shoot saw blades that slice through enemies. The saw blades bounce off of surfaces but will eventually break. Good for claustrophobic areas or corridors, like the entirety of Prelude. The attractor saw gun, that's just what I'm going to call them now, still has the three magnets that work with the saw blades, but instead of forming a tight cluster around the magnet, it instead circles around it on a horizontal axis, usually not even touching the magnet, and it will still bounce off walls, still breaking after it hits it enough. If a magnet is stuck onto an enemy, it circles around them like sharks circling them in water. Though, again, it usually doesn't even hit them, so it's not good for tackling lone enemies. What I like to do is to stick it to a super aggressive enemy, like a filth or a swords machine, and basically turn them into a walking saw trap. Because they always follow you, anywhere you go or turn into Slicey Central. Pretty good for the cyber grind. The overheat saw gun only has one overheat charge, as opposed to the standard nail guns two. The standard saw blade also does a lot less damage than the attractor saw blade, where the attractor saw blade can one-shot enemies like husks, the overheat needs two. When the gun is overheated, you fire this blazing saw blade of death that deals way more damage, is way more durable, and sets them on fire and burns them way down. You send this their way and they'll be on their way to hell, or wherever they go when they die and they're already in hell. You don't need to 100% charge the overheat meter, but the damage is higher the more you overheat it, so I always charge it fully. The standard nail gun isn't great for big hordes of enemies, but really good for big enemies, while the saw gun is the opposite. Not great against big enemies, but good at dispatching big groups. So I personally like to have the attractor nail gun to slice up swarms of smaller enemies and the overheat nail gun to cut down larger enemies with a big, large, fiery barrage of nails. The electric rail cannon is acquired near the end of level 2-2, and it's the closest thing to a BFG-like weapon in this game so far. It's pretty much the piercer pistol's charge shot on steroids on steroids. It fires this laser shot that deals an incredible amount of damage and pierces an infinite amount of enemies. But after firing, it has this long cooldown time that appears on your HUD that applies to all of the rail cannons in your arsenal. And that's pretty much it. The Malicious Rail Cannon is acquired by purchasing it from the shop after it's unlocked by you-know-how at this point. It doesn't pierce any enemies like the Electric Rail Cannon, but upon surface or enemy contact, it lets out this large explosion that does massive damage to anything nearby. Again, a very simple but powerful weapon. The Screwdriver is acquired by purchasing it from the shop Unlike the other two rail cannons, it fires a projectile instead of being a hit scan, meaning that you can't ricochet it off a coin. When the screw projectile latches onto an enemy, it drills into them and deals continuous damage, either until death or until it runs out of time. The main use for the screwdriver is for health. While it drills into them, it lets out a lot of blood for consumption. Mmm, blood. It only does any real damage to a single enemy, unlike the other two rail cannons which can devastate entire groups if used right. So of course, it's best used against big enemies, which already applies to every other rail cannon, but I mean especially this. You'll get pretty much no value out of it by using it against a small enemy. If you stick a drill into an enemy, you can hit it with a feedbacker arm, which will do a pretty good chunk of damage, and it launches the drill out the other side of the enemy. If it hits another enemy, it'll reset the timer and continue to do damage. So it's best to aim it at another big enemy so you get twice the worth out of the drill. 
So that means that every rail cannon type has some sort of trick to get more out of a single shot. Even if there isn't any other enemy around to stick it to, you get to hit it at the last second so you can get that extra bit of damage out. The freeze frame rocket launcher is acquired in the middle of level 5-3. Rocket launchers in general in this game fire out rockets. Yeah, pretty unbelievable, but hear me out. And the rockets explode into a harmless shockwave that knocks enemies into the air. The only way it can deal damage is by hitting an enemy directly, which causes a lethal explosion that damages any enemies around. But that's not all. If you bounce an enemy up into the air and then shoot them, it releases a giant explosion that obliterates anything nearby. The freeze frame's alt fire ticks down this clock, and while active, any rockets from any rocket launcher, even other variants, that are in the air are frozen in place, and doesn't continue its trajectory until the timer runs out or you disable it manually. And while frozen in the air, rockets can still go off from any enemies touching it, so it can kind of act like a mine layer, except that it only lasts for a few seconds. Besides the mine laying, you can set down other traps for enemies, like going around one area, firing a bunch of rockets in its direction, luring a bunch of enemies in, and then obliterating them by releasing it all. It's pretty hard to actually pull off, but it can be pretty funny remaking that John Wick album cover with rockets before erasing any evidence of them existing at all. If it wasn't obvious enough already, you can rocket jump with this thing. But unlike grenade jumping, you can jump without taking any damage, albeit not very far. But believe it or not, this isn't even the best way to traverse with this weapon. If you shoot a frozen rocket, you can jump on top of it and surf it. You'll hear a special latching sound effect indicating that when you're ready for liftoff. Then you turn off the clock and you're off. But V1's getting pretty fat from drinking all the blood of the damned, and the rocket can't carry him too far before falling down. You can still chain rockets to go even further, but you'll lose time as you go on, so you can't do it forever. Another thing to mention is that while you're surfing a frozen rocket, you can adjust the trajectory before you launch off. How am I surfing on a rocket that's above my head? Because ULTRA KILL, THAT'S HOW! Shop. The SRS Cannon, which no one knows what SRS stands for, but I like to imagine it stands for SHEESH! THAT WRECKED THEY SHIT UP! Functions the same as the freeze frame rocket launcher, but the alt fire fires a cannonball that travels further the more you charge it, and after use triggers an 8 second cooldown. Upon hitting a surface that isn't on anything sentient, so the insides of King Minos' corpse doesn't count because he's dead, it creates another harmless shockwave, just like the primary fire. You even deal a critical explosion if you hit an enemy launched up by it. But hitting anything still alive causes it to bounce off of it, which is yours to do whatever you want until it falls back down onto the ground and does the shockwave thing again. And while it looks like it bounces straight up into the air from this angle, it actually bounces away from the enemy a little bit. Something to look out for if you're rotating around an enemy. You can shoot the cannonball while it's up in the air to create an explosion that lights enemies on fire, and you could even jump with it by firing it overhead and shooting the cannonball after angling yourself to the direction you want to go. So it's like a rock it jump. Get it? Cause it's a rock? Oh my god, fucking stupid ass. If you hit the bounced up cannonball with the feedbacker arm, you hit it in a straight trajectory that moseys on through light enemies like nothing. Great for dealing with light hordes, though it does get stopped by heavy enemies. The cannonball can actually be grabbed by the whiplash arm, so you can yank it over to you and punch it wherever you want to redirect it to. You can even play ping pong with yourself. And that was every weapon in Ultra Kill as of this video's release date. There is more to come, so for people following the channel, expect this video to be remade and re-uploaded a lot.